Hello friends, it's The Stitches, and today I'm finally back and ready to show you my progress on my annual wardrobe update. We already went through my clothes and tried everything on, so now we're going to make some of the major repairs that I need to do on my existing wardrobe before I start buying or selling stuff. As a quick note, normally I'm usually already done with this whole process by now, but usually we aren't dealing with the fallout of a pandemic either, so uh... Whatever. Let's just get into some projects. My first repair is super simple. I'm just adjusting the fit on this lingerie slip dress at the side seams and shoulder straps. Luckily, I had already determined where and how much to take it in. I just never actually did it. So it's just been hanging in my office for an actually embarrassing amount of time now. We're just pinching in the fabric like you would make a dart. Luckily, this fabric has a really nice drape to it, so I don't really need to trim anything away. That means it can be let back out easily if I ever decide to give it away or gain weight. And here it is after being refitted. You can already see a huge difference just on the dress form, but here it is worn. And we have one garment finished. Next up I have this yellow sundress that needs a similar treatment, however, the big thing this one needs is some new elastic in the waistband. Before I replace the elastic though, I want to make sure that I have a good fit on the rest of the bodice. Side note, look at how uneven the tag placement is. I know it's just a small thing, but it should be symmetrical with the center back line. But clearly whoever made this fast fashion garment didn't have time to care about that. That's why fast fashion pieces are low quality, by the way. It's because they expect an entire garment to come together in like a matter of minutes. Like they have this small group of people and they're like, hey, we need 5,000 of this item made today. Do it. And then we like expect those garments to have anything resembling quality. <laughs> Using a seam gauge, I made sure the seams on both sides had the same amount of fabric taken in. We'll also use the seam gauge to figure out where to stitch the straps. Once we know where all of our various stitch lines need to be, we'll take this over to the sewing machine. Next, I moved on to the elastic. I was planning on, you know, just opening up the elastic channel and pulling it in a few inches to refit it. But uh, it turns out it didn't have that kind of elastic channel in it. In fact, the whole elastic placement was done with one stitching line. <laughs> so I just had to take the whole strip of elastic out anyway. Once I got a good look at the elastic though, it was pretty clear that it needed to be completely replaced. Here's our fresh, new, pretty elastic. Since the elastic will need to be pulled while it's sewn, I'll first have to carefully pin it in place in a few strategic spots, that way it gets an even distribution of elastic to fabric. And it's not a full, proper day of sewing without one of these. After the elastic is installed, I can turn it back in to recreate the channel that serves as the waistband for the stress. Or underbust band, since it's an empire waist or an ampere waist, depending on your level of pretentiousness. Then I just decided to clean up the shoulder straps with the serger and some top stitching to keep the seam allowance in place. So now this dress fits fine. Like, the fit isn't the issue, but I still kind of hate it. Bear in mind, I just got this dress and I wasn't able to try it on first, so I had no idea what it was gonna look like on me anyway. And now that I've seen it and now that I've had a chance to try it on, I think I just dislike how it looks on my body. 
and I thought a blouse would help. So I filmed the try on with a blouse and I still don't like it. I don't know, should I just keep experimenting with it? Should I sell it? Should I chop off the bottom and just turn it into a skirt? Who knows? Let me know what you think. This is gonna be a bit of a longer video, so before our next project, let's have a quick ad break. See you in approximately two minutes. Unless you have YouTube Premium. Or skip the ads, I guess. That's fair. I would skip them too. Our next project was the simplest and quickest on the list. I got this incredible vintage evening wear top and the boning in the front is completely bent out of shape, most likely from poor storage, but who knows. These 80s and 90s pieces unfortunately often suffer from cheap boning that has been left to sit in improper storage for a very long time, so this actually happens quite a bit. <laughs> I'm just going to open up a little gap in the boning channel that I can use to slip out the old stuff and replace it. And here's the first piece. And the second. The boning I'm replacing it with isn't super great, but it's light and flexible and shouldn't bend so dramatically. <laughs> And now we'll just stitch up the gap we made earlier. No more weird shapes in the front. This project doesn't have such a dramatic before and after, but I'll show it anyway. I like how this top pairs with this Emily Temple cute skirt. Next, I'm just doing some light stain removal on this thrifted skirt. I'm actually just using the same bottle of OxyClean spot treatment that I used on my Baby the Star Shine Bright dress. After locating the stains, I gave them a liberal spritz and rubbed the chemical into the fabric. And this needs to sit overnight. Due to the age of the stain, I just assumed that I would need to give it several treatments, but all the spots actually came out immediately. <laughs> I loved this skirt as is, but it's a little long for my preferences and it makes it feel a little too librarian. So I decided to shorten it and give it a frayed raw hem. But the correct way, in air quotes, so the skirt doesn't actually literally just fall apart. After agonizing over the measurements for way too long, I decided to cut off four inches and create a one inch fringe. My sewing machine is so kind for letting me show you this part in this light, I know. But basically, I just set my machine to the smallest stitch length that actually works. To make a one inch fringe, I'll create a stitch line one inch from the edge of the fabric. The tight stitches will hold the yarns of the fabric in place so that it can't fray any further than this point. That way I can have a raw edge on what is actually a finished garment. I'm sure... Half of you are already very intimately familiar with this, but half of you probably aren't. So when you weave fabric, you have a set of warp yarns and a set of weft yarns. I'm using a seam ripper to pull out the weft yarns, leaving behind only the vertical warp yarns. This is a long and tedious process. Basically, you just look at where the grid in the fabric is and you try to pull out the horizontal ones and leave the vertical ones be. After a few hours on my couch, this skirt is ready to go back into my closet. Again, not a huge change, but honestly, most of these didn't really need one. <laughs> I added extra back panels to this dress to make it fit, and now I have to take them back out to make it fit. But that's what seam rippers are for. This is another piece I wanted to shorten, so I removed a few inches from the bottom of the hem as well. I didn't want to dig out another zipper, so I just picked out the old one to reuse. Honestly, I very rarely use a brand new, never before used zipper in projects. This process is actually kind of pleasing. A lot of thread is wasted though. So 
So this is a zipper installation method that I learned in vintage home sewing books and patterns from the 50s and 60s. And it's not my preferred method. I haven't done it in forever, but I figured I would show you guys how to do it as an option for those of you who may be struggling with zippers because I find it is surprisingly beginner friendly. First, we're going to start by stitching up the back seam normally as if this was just a pull-on garment. Be sure to give yourself plenty of seam allowance, like more than you would normally give yourself. Next, open up the seam allowance with your iron and press it as flat as you can. We're going to pin the zipper right side down, aligning the teeth with our seam line. So the zipper pull should be like buried under the fabric. When this gets stitched down, you're doing it semi-blind. So stitch whichever side you are most comfortable with. After the zipper is stitched into place, we'll use a seam ripper to open up the back seam over the zipper teeth. This will free your zipper so that you can open and close it now. You may have to go back and sew over the first couple inches of the zipper where the pull is because your zipper foot probably won't actually let you get close enough to it, even if you are stitching from the wrong side. I also had some neck facing to stitch down when I was done as well. I primarily use this piece for layering, so it never had to be too fitted, but now it's so much more flattering. We only have a couple projects left, and as I said, this video is going to be quite long, and I've also been gone for a while and need to make some money, so time for the fabled second ad break. We'll be right back. In my last video, I initially decided that I was going to wait to replace the buttons and make repairs on this blazer due to the sheer size of my repair pile. But then I realized that that was just silly and I should absolutely do it now. The cool thing about removing old buttons is that the process automatically leaves behind really convenient thread markings for where the new buttons should go. I'm replacing what actually weren't apparently the original buttons on this blazer with these vintage pearly ones that I found in an antique shop and squirreled away for the right moment. Vintage buttons for a vintage blazer. Unfortunately, this piece also needs quite a bit of darning and I don't have any thread that comes close to matching and I didn't want to go all the way to the fabric store, which by the way, isn't near any of my usual grocery stores or anything. So I have to go out of my way for exactly one spool of thread in the middle of a, the rest of this project actually can wait. And besides, I would like to make a dedicated video for darning, but here are the pretty buttons. Next, I would like to have a moment of not actual silence, a moment of ranting dedicated to plans that I'm not sure why I just assumed would work. These two chemicals not only failed to do what they were intended to do, but I'm actually certain they made the problem they were supposed to fix worse. So my pile of white clothes that were ruined by either dye stains or age will need some Googling and some regrouping. Now we have this lilac satin slip dress that half of you love and half of you hate. And boy do those of you who hate it really hate it. <laughs> I recently took this in and while it was comfortable enough, I noticed that there was just too much weird pulling with the lace on the front for comfort. So I decided to put it on the dress form and see if there was anything I could do to alleviate that. And once I did that, I realized that the front really just needed to be reshaped in general. Once I had the side front seams how I liked them, I just gave it a simple straight stitch and a serge, and then gave the seams a good press. There's still the tiniest bit of puckering, 
but a lot of that has to just do with this being a vintage piece and the lace has shrunk quite a bit in all of that time so this is as close as we're getting without just replacing the lace altogether. Oh, you know how people like to say that wearing a slip dress makes you look half-dressed? Okay, here. I give you three quarters dressed. The final project is simple enough. I added felt bunnies to this cardigan on a whim, and I decided I'd actually prefer it if it doesn't have bunnies on it. So I'm gonna quickly pick them off. Once again, this is a tedious process, but also a quite satisfying process. This cardigan actually works really well with an A-line, apparently. I call this how to tell people you were into Madeline and Angelina Ballerina growing up without having to tell people that you were into Madeline and Angelina Ballerina growing up. Okay, before I go, I have actually started to buy a few new pieces and I got some pairs of pants and some actual summer clothes because I realized that I didn't actually have any. And I recently acquired this pair of leggings off of Depop and I think they're mildly cursed. The surface of this fabric feels like it's received some sort of weird chemical finish and it's creating some let's call it odd visual distortion. So I decided to give it a fabric test film and this, the distortion is visible on camera too. So what I'm saying is this isn't some weird effect caused by the camera and the lights. These leggings actually look like this in real life too. So uh, do your eyes just magically not see it or are you ready to slowly descend into the spiral with me? All right, pals, that's all for today. As always, I strongly recommend trying to mend and repair your clothes whenever possible. I know not everyone has the time or skill, but keeping your current garments in your closet as long as possible keeps them out of landfill, which means you have to buy less overall, which means the it's, it's just the best way to keep a sustainable closet. Just try to try to keep your clothes in your closet as long as possible. And with that, I hope everyone has a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye!